Assalamu alaikum, I'm Pavel and I welcome you all to the fourth tutorial of the Calculus video tutorial series. In this lecture, we'll learn about limits to infinity. As you can see, already I have written on the board. Okay, so let's get started. Before getting into the details, I will assume that you have a very clear idea about what infinity is. Infinity is something which is very big in the positive direction or in the negative direction. And to tell you another thing that infinity is not a number, this is a concept. A concept that we have something which is very very big in the positive direction or in the negative direction. Okay, so let's take an example where we have limit x tends to infinity and we have a function x square. So what will be this value? What will be this value we need to calculate? Okay, and let's consider another case limit x tends to infinity say twice x or we have another function as minus twice x minus x square. So we will see what will happen if the value of the variable tends to positive infinity or we will also see what happens of these functions when the value of the variable tends to negative infinity. So for a better understanding, we need to make a table here. So this will make things easier for us. You can also write it down on your paper. So here I will write x and below this column I will write the values of x. Okay. So if you already watched the first video, you know what will happen now. In this column, I will write the value of the variable that is x and I will gradually increase the value towards infinity. Okay. So let's the value of x start with 1. So if the value of x is 1, what happens to x square? So 1 square is also 1, so we will get 1. And if we increase the value now, if we consider 10, then x square it will be 1 double 0. If we consider 100, it will be 1 0 0 0 0. So we can already see that if the value of the variable increases, then the value of x square also increases in the positive direction. So if you write one triple zero, we will get one zero 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 zero. So in this way, we can say that the value of x is increasing and it's moving towards infinity. So it's going to be very, very large. And the value of x square, this is also going towards positive infinity. So we can write that the value of this problem will be plus infinity. I have written infinity, okay? Now, let us consider the case as twice x. What happens? So for x is equal to one, twice x will be two into one, that is two. And for 10, we will get two times 10, that is 20. For 100, we'll get 200. 1000, we will get 2000. So here also, we will get positive infinity. Okay, so we can come to a conclusion that if the value of the variable tends to positive infinity and we have an expression where uh, the degree is positive, that is the degree of the variable is positive. Okay, so it could be x that is the degree is 1, it could be x square that is its degree is 2. So we can say that in these cases the value will always be plus infinity. Okay. So we will get plus infinity for x cube as well for x to the power 4 or any values where the degree of x is positive. Okay, So we can write that for limit x tends to infinity x to the power n will also be plus infinity. I hope we can come to a conclusion and you have understood what I have said so far. Okay, Now let's consider the reciprocals. What will happen? To reciprocals and what will happen uh, if we have a negative sign in front of these expressions. Let's consider this case. If we have minus twice x, so what will happen? If we have a minus that is a negative constant in front of the variable, then each time this number will be multiplied by minus 2. So for x, we will uh, multiply all the values of x with minus 2. So we will get 
minus 2 here, we'll get minus 20, minus 200, minus 2000. So we can see that the values are increasing but in the negative direction. So it's going to be very, very large but in the negative direction, which is called negative infinity. So we will get minus infinity here. And similarly for minus x square, we will get the same result as x square but in all the cases we will get a minus one in front of all the numbers so it will be minus one minus one hundred minus one zero 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 minus one zero 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 in this way it will move towards minus infinity okay so we can say that the same thing happens but as we have a minus the value will be minus infinity. So we can say that limit x tends to infinity minus of x to the power n will be minus infinity. Or we can also consider a constant here. So we can modify these two particular lines as limit x tends to infinity c into x to the power n is equal to plus infinity if c is positive and if c is negative then it will be minus infinity. Okay. So we can uh, in short write it here okay so this value depends on c if c is positive we'll get positive infinity if c is negative we'll get negative infinity okay so here say for example if we look into this particular example x square and we have a minus one okay because minus x square is equal to minus one into x square so the value of c is here minus one so we will get minus infinity so I hope we have come to a conclusion that if we have limit x tends to infinity and c into x to the power n, this n is always positive. You have to remember this part because uh, here you can see the degree of x is 1, the degree of x is 2 and the degree of x if uh, the degree is 3 or 4 or whatever it is, it will always be infinity. It will move towards infinity and if we have a negative number in front of this uh, variable then it will be minus infinity. I hope uh, this part is clear. Okay, so let's consider another case. I will clear the board and make a table once again. So let's consider another case. Now we will look into reciprocals, okay? So if the value of the variable increases towards infinity, what happens to these expressions, okay? So let me write limit x tends to infinity and one by x is equal to what, okay? So for the value of x as one, we will get one divided by one, so we will get one. Now let us increase the value of the variable, so consider this variable as 10, so we will get 1 divided by 10, so we'll get 0.1. For 100, we'll get 0.01. For 1000, we'll get 0.001. 1 triple 0, 0.001, 1 tetra 0, we'll get 0 0.001. So in this way, we can see that the value of the variable is increasing and it's moving towards positive infinity, but what happens to this expression, 1 divided by x? So we can see that it's decreasing from 1, it goes down to 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1, and afterwards it will be 0 0.00001 0 0 0 0 0 and in this way we will see that it's moving towards 0. So we can say that for limit x tends to infinity 1 by x it will be equal to 0. Okay. I hope this is clear. So. For a better understanding, let me draw the number line here. This is 0 and this is 1. So at first you get 1, then you get 0 0.1, so 0 0.1 is somewhat here, 0 0.1, then 0 0.01, so you can consider 0 0.01 somewhat here. So it's going to uh, very, very close towards 0. So we can say that when uh, the value of the variable is increasing, say for example, if you consider uh, a number, if you have one followed by infinite numbers of zeros, then the result will be point followed by infinite number of zeros and then a one. So this is uh, even more closer to zero. So if you can somehow reach the value of x to infinity, then the value of one by x will be equal to zero. So this is what it 
means by this expression. So we can say limit extends to infinity, uh, 1 by x will be equal to 0. Okay. Now let's look what happens for 1 by x square. At first for the value of 1, we will get 1 divided by 1 square, so 1 and then things will be interesting from here. For then we will get 0 0.01 because 1 divided by 10 square, it will be 0 0.01, then it will be 0 0.001, uh, sorry, point, it will be triple zero 001, then it will be 0 0.000001. So in this way, we can see that this is also approaching towards 0. So we will see uh, that it goes towards 0. So we can write limit x tends to infinity 1 by x square is equal to 0. In fact, for all other numbers where the degree of x here is positive, that is 1 divided by x square, x cube, or whatever the number is, if the value of n here, if we consider it as 1 divided by x to the power n, then it will always be 0. So we can write limit x tends to infinity, 1 divided by x to the power n is equal to 0. But you have to remember one thing that the value of n here is always positive. So by positive, it means it will be at least 1 or greater than that. Okay. So we can write these things. Now let us consider another situation. What happens if we have a large constant in the numerator? Say limit x tends to infinity, we have a constant here in the numerator and in the denominator we have x to the power n. So what will happen? What will be the result? So let us consider a case where in the numerator we have 10 to the power 8 and in the denominator we have x square. So what will happen? For the value of x as 1, we will get 10 to the power 8 divided by 1. So we will get 10 to the power 8. Now for 10, we will get 10 square. So we'll get 10 to the power 6. Then we'll get 10 to the power 4. You can verify this calculations, then we'll get 10 square and then we'll get 1, then we'll get 0 0.01. So you can see that finally this value is moving towards 0. So whatever the constant here is in the numerator, since this constant is negligible in comparison to infinity, so whatever the value in the numerator is, it will always be 0. Okay. Okay. So we can say that for whatever the value of C here is, this will always be zero for the positive values of n. Okay. Now you might consider another case that if the value of the constant c is negative, what happens? Uh, it doesn't matter because this will also move towards zero. But the case will be a bit different, but it will also move towards zero. We will consider these cases here. Okay. So let's consider another case. Let me clear the board here. So, so far we have come into conclusion for the facts that for limit x tends to infinity, if we have a constant here into x to the power n, it will always be plus infinity for the positive value of c and it will be negative infinity for the negative value of c. Okay, so this is what we learned at first and then we came into another conclusion that limit x tends to infinity c divided by x to the power n will be equal to 0. Okay, so we have understood this first, I hope. Okay, now moving to next examples. If we have limit x tends to negative infinity, what happens to c divided by x to the power n? or c into x to the power n, okay? So for that, we need to make a table once again. So for values of x, we will at first consider about one divided by x. So it's going towards negative infinity. So starting from one, we will now move towards negative direction, okay? So for the value of one, okay, say starting from minus one, it will be minus 10 and then move towards minus 100. So see what happens. So 1 divided by minus 1 is minus 1, 1 divided by minus 10 is point minus point 0.1, minus point 0.01. For minus 1000, we'll get minus point 0.001. So we can see that the value here in the left column is moving towards negative infinity. Of course, this is moving towards negative infinity. But what happens to uh, 1 divided by x? So 
If you look into the number line, you consider uh, this case here that at first you get minus 1 and then you get minus 0.1. So y is minus 0.1. So this is almost here, you can say minus 0.1. So this is somewhat closer to 0. And if you consider minus 0.01, this is even more closer to 0 and this is even more closer. So in this way, we'll see that this is going towards 0. So for this particular case also, we will also be able to write that limit x tends to minus infinity, sorry, for limit x tends to minus infinity, 1 divided by x is also 0. And what will happen about 1 divided by x square? This will also converge towards 0, okay? So for minus 1, it will be 1 divided by uh, minus 1 square, okay? So ultimately this is, uh, we can for sure say that this will be going towards 0 because minus 1 square, it will be a large number. So if you divide 1 divided by a large number, this is going to be always 0. So in short, you can remember that when you divide a smaller number with a very large number then the value is going towards zero so this is also going towards zero you can write that okay so this will be uh, one and this will be point uh, zero one i guess okay but uh, you may be surprised to see that here we don't get minus because this x square so this square is converting the negative values into positive because minus times minus we will get plus okay and here we'll get 0 0.0001 okay so this is of course zero and again if the degree of x here is increasing say x cube 1 by x to the power 4 whatever it is we can write as zero so in short we can say that limit x tends to minus infinity c divided by x to the power n will be equal to zero and for the case of c we already discussed about this part earlier so whatever the value of c since c is negligible in comparison to infinity plus infinity or minus infinity whatever it is this is very very small in comparison to infinity so the value will always be zero because we are dividing a small number with a large number okay so this is going to be zero so i hope so far, uh, whatever I have discussed so far, this topic is clear to you. Uh, in the next lecture, we will discuss about the next parts of limits to infinity and we will see the application of infinity in expressions and in rational functions. So I hope you will have watched the previous three videos, also this video, and if you have uh, been benefited and if you think these videos are helpful for you and your friends, then please subscribe this channel and inform your friends about my channel and i wish uh, and i hope that you will be watching the future videos as well so thank you so much for staying with this channel stay blessed allah